Have you ever wondered what math is like in fifth grade? My name is Rebecca Kramer de Ortiz, and I'm the math instructional coach for kinder through grade eight here at Interamericano. In this webinar, you will learn what your child is learning, how, you, how they are learning, and why we teach math the way we do here at Inter. The slides in this webinar are very detailed, so feel free to pause at any time to read them more in depth. Let's start off with a number talk. Using mental math, try to solve 18 times five. How did your brain solve this? In class, we want to focus on your strategy and not just the answer. Maybe your brain solved it like this, or like this. Maybe you did this. Did you think of it like this, or like this? While there's only one right answer, there are multiple ways to get there. The possibilities are endless, and there's no wrong strategy. There are a lot of creative ways to solve the same problem, which is a great lesson for our students to learn. In addition, these number talks are structured in a way that students have to explain their thinking, which supports their oral language skills. At Enter, we use the Common Core State Standards to guide what we teach. We use a program called Math and Focus, which utilizes Singapore math methodologies. We stay up to date on current best practice and we play math games. Let's learn a little bit more about the Common Core State Standards. Your child's teacher uses very detailed standards to guide his or her instruction. Here, you can see the overview of these standards, which we refer to as our priority standards. Feel free to pause now and read these more carefully. If you're interested in learning more, feel free to go to the Common Core website and look up Grade 5 Math Standards. While we have numerous standards to cover each year, the mathematicians who created the Common Core Math Standards offer guidance in the area each grade level should focus the majority of their instruction on. Instruction in fifth grade should focus on three main areas. First is that students build fluency with addition and subtraction of fractions. Second, fifth graders will extend their knowledge of division to two-digit divisors, like dividing by 25, for example. They will start integrating decimals into the place value system and will start working with decimals when adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Yes, that means we are doing away with remainders. Lastly, students will be introduced to the concept of volume. These are called the Common Core Standards for Mathematical Practice. These standards are expected for all math students kindergarten through grade 12. These standards emphasize important practices and mindsets about math, which align well to what current brain research on math instruction is encouraging. A different way of looking at them is to read them as I can statements. At Enter, we use Math and Focus, utilizing Singapore math methodologies. Singapore Math is a methodology which integrates established international research into a highly effective teaching approach. The heart of this methodology is problem solving, as offering context to math concepts is key to a deeper understanding. Singapore Math builds conceptual understanding and positive attitudes toward math. It develops critical thinking skills and advanced problem solving proficiency. The focus is on place value and number sense. These are key concepts that form the foundation for all the math we do now and in the future. These skills lead to greater mental math abilities and reasoning. An easy way for you to encourage this at home is to ask, is your answer reasonable or how do you know you're correct? We need to expose our students to more than one method when teaching math. Many of us learned that math was a set of rules that needed to be followed. And if we didn't follow the rule, we felt that we weren't good at math. The focus when we're teaching math now is to offer, explore, and invite multiple approaches, which encourages creativity and flexibility with numbers. We want our students to understand why we do what we do, not just how to do it. We teach math concepts using CPA, Concrete Pictorial Abstract. Here's an example of CPA. The concrete part is the part students are actually touching with their hands. In this example, I would be using place value disks or blocks with a place value chart and would ask the students to physically move them. Afterwards, I would do pictorial. I would do a drawing that is similar to the concrete example we did. Lastly, I would use abstract, where I use numerals and operation signs, which you can see at the bottom of this slide. Our brain lights up in five different areas while we're doing math. Two of these are visual. Because of this, we have some very useful pictorial models that we consistently use in our program. 10 frames are introduced in pre-K and kinder and used up until grade two. Number bonds help us compose and decompose numbers. We can make these with addition or multiplication. 
Bar models are introduced in grade two as a way to visually represent the math we're exploring, primarily with word problems. These are a very important first step toward algebraic understanding. Singapore math, as I said before, focuses on problem solving. This creates a context for the math concepts we are teaching and should be integrated at the beginning, middle, and end of every new concept. In grade five, students should be familiar with the use of bar models. This is an exceptional tool for students to pictorially represent their thinking. It will help guide them through problems. To be honest, now that I know about this tool, I can't approach a word problem without it. We encourage our students to follow these seven steps when approaching a word problem. This sequence is an excellent way for students to organize their thinking and ensure they answer the problem completely. Here's an example of a fifth grade word problem and how a bar model could help me solve it. Feel free to pause to look at it more carefully. At Enter, we stay up to date on current best practice in math instruction. UCubed is a wonderful website created by Joe Bowler, a Stanford, professor, Stanford University professor. It takes current brain research related to math instruction and learning and shares it with students, parents, and instructors. I highly encourage you to explore this website and the amazing resources it provides. Regular assessment of our students is necessary to guide instruction. When we are assessing students to see how well they're doing, we use more formative than summative. Summative assessments are things like tests that students get at the end of learning something, whereas formative assessments are given in various ways throughout the lesson. This helps teachers decide what the next steps are to ensure each student gets what he or she needs. Students also get to reflect on their learning and assess themselves in various ways. This is important so that they can own their learning and be part of the learning process. We use small group instruction the majority of the time we're teaching math. This gives teachers the opportunity to differentiate their instruction based on the data they collect from assessments, observations, and their knowledge of their students. Within a class of 20, there are children who have different strengths and different interests. Teachers keep this in mind when they form their small groups to work on content. As you know, there's no homework in elementary, but that doesn't mean we aren't working on math at home. Please play games at home that reinforce skills being taught in the class and find ways to show that math is everywhere. Bake with your kids, count things, find shapes, model with your kids a curiosity of numbers to help build on the natural curiosity they already have. Your child's teacher likely has encouraged you to check out Prodigy and perhaps even Freckle. These two wonderful apps provide differentiated math practice for students, are fun and engaging, and send useful reports to your child's teacher. If you're looking for an easy way to practice math at home, these two resources are ideal. At Inter, we play lots of math games. Games are an important way for students to practice math and create context for the skills they're learning. Not sure where to find games? Google them. All you have to type in is math games for fifth grade and you'll find amazing resources. Usually a set of dice and a stack of cards is all you need to play some wonderful games that will reinforce the math skills while at the same time having fun with your family. Your child is an amazing resource as well. Ask him or her what games are being played in their classroom. I hope this webinar was useful and you feel more informed about the math your child will be exposed to this year. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me or your child's teacher. I hope you have a lovely day.